So a little bit about myself. So my name is Rebecca. Um, last name is Autre Bona. I am well. I, I didn't update my title in the in the um, in the slide here, but I currently serve as a risk and control manager for a technology company. Um, I have over eight years of experience, going on nine years of experience um, in auditing as well as risk management functions. Um, I started my career in. Um... Can you guys hear me? Someone said that they can't hear me. Can you guys hear? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yes. Yes, I can hear yes. you. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, so if you can't hear me, please try and um, check your audio, okay? All right, yeah, so I started my career um, in consulting in public accounting uh, back in 20. 15 um, similar to you guys I took a very similar training as what you guys will be taking um, and at the time I was pursuing my bachelor's um, I took a training a few months following that I got a job as a um, experienced IT auditor for a public accounting firm and through that my experience has been focused mainly on like um, um, doing audit, financial statement audit, ITGC testing, SOX, SOD reviews, FISMA. Some of these may not, <laughs> may sound like a strange language, but at the end of the class, you will get to know what they are. Um, and then over time, I transitioned um, out of public accounting into um, industry working for Freddie Mac, where I was mainly focused on risk advisory work. So pretty much helping companies um, manage their risk. Right. So I did a lot of like risk assessment, did a lot of control development, control implementation. Um, I worked a lot with issue management, which pretty much entailed if an, if a if a company perform if an audit was performed for a company and issues were identified, my role was to pretty much take that issue, figure out who it applies to and get those people in the room and then we discuss to come up with what's called a remediation plan um so and then that's also what i do currently so just to keep it short and brief so that's a little bit about me um outside of work i'm married um i have a daughter and yeah so i'll keep it short and brief um along um along with that i also teach with uh, my husband his name is nana um i'll let him introduce himself a little bit uh hi good morning guys um uh, as, as you can see you don't see my face in the video um because i'm the guy who works in the background right um i like to you know get things moving but i don't show my face so pardon if you don't see me but that's the picture right there <laughs> um rebecca had to do a lot of work to get me to take that picture um so again uh welcome guys my name is nana um, and, and I think what you're seeing on that slide is a, it's, it's kind of old. We, we will tweak it a little bit, but I, I have a bachelor's degree in computer science. I've been in IT for seven to eight years. Um, and I've worked in, in the government space, right? So I, 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 I'm currently working on a business right now, but. Uh, prior to this, I was a uh, DevOps engineer. I worked with a lot of, uh, I worked with the compliance team a lot. I worked with the security guys. I worked with developers. I worked with engineers. Um, I have an extensive background in IT. So um, my role in, in this class or in this course is, is that I think just to make the, the transition into that IT side of IT audit a bit easier. I try to break down um, most of the complex IT concepts like networking, like um, Active Directory authentication, um, all those fancy stuff you hear in IT. Um, I try to help break them down so that um, those that don't already have a background um, are able to assimilate. I also try to carry along those that already have some background um, just to guide them into how it ties into IT audit. Um, you will be seeing me in your IT 101 class. That was going to be the first class you're going to take. You see me in the IT 101 class where um, I'm just going to do basic IT, um, you know, introductions. Um, and then 
you will see me later on, later, way later on in the, um, in the infrastructure class where we now go deep into how IT audit um, is done when, when we're talking about the infrastructure testing, right? So this, that's just a little bit about me. Um, um, again, like Rebecca said, I'm married to Rebecca. We have a daughter, a lovely daughter. Um, and we, we, we are happy to have you guys here. So, um, you see me soon, you see me shortly <laughs> next week. All right. Thank you. Nana. Um, all right, let's move on. So let's talk about what is the objective of our training? So our training is, well, I'm, I'm just going to break it off by saying that they, I do acknowledge that there are a lot of similar trainings out there okay so our training is not um the only it audit training that you may have come across or that exists so i'm gonna focus more on what we do that is different from what i've seen um what i've seen from other people so with our training we try to make it to be very hands-on so we focus mainly on preparing our students, whether they're already in the um, in the industry or they're looking to transition into the industry. We focus on just touching on the fun foundational IT audit knowledge to teach them what is IT audit, what are the different projects that we perform or you will perform as an IT auditor, and how do you perform it. And we um, we accomplish that through the lectures that we hold as well as like the projects. So it, our class is very, very hands-on. We have, um, through the course of our training, you will get to work on about five to six projects and those projects will touch on every single phases of the IT audit such that when you are done with our class you won't just have knowledge that you don't know how to apply but you can actually have a tangible application that you, so that way when you're sitting in front of an interviewer you're not just speaking in the cloud you know <laughs> i've interviewed a lot of people and one of the things that I've, i find about people who take similar training as these is that um they know the stuff but they can't really speak to how they do it right so i try to bridge that gap by making sure that whatever we teach we can actually also teach you guys how to apply so at the end of our class you not just leave you won't just leave with the it audit concept and the idea of what you're supposed to do on the job you will actually have real experience that you can say and speak to at an interview Um, so some of you guys, this is the first time that you're hearing of IT audit. You probably don't even know what you don't really know what it is. So I want to take some time to give an overview of IT audit so that you kind of get a foundational knowledge of what IT audit is. And before I kind of get into it, I just want to establish that there are many different type of auditor out there. There are inventory auditors, there are financial, financial audit auditors, um, but our class, we focus specifically on information technology or IT, okay? So IT audit sometimes can be referred to as IS audit information security audit or information technology audit it both means the same thing what that means is that it's simply an examination or evaluation of 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 management controls within their information technology infrastructure i'm going to break it down for you so back in the day when companies are running their business they have to record their data right whether it's financial data whether it's business data whether it's inventory data whatever information that is they had to record it somewhere in the back in the back in the day it was a manual process right meaning they kept files probably in cabinets and things like that but as the world has evolved now we have applications now we have systems now we have tools that can actually do this job for you so with that being said 
companies are leveraging information technology or information systems to help them run their business and help them with record management, data management, et cetera, et cetera. Now, some of these companies are private. Some of these companies are public. Some of them are um, nonprofit, right? And based on the industry that they're in, there there is a certain mandate or requirements that they have to show compliance to, okay? And in order for them to show compliance to that, they have to be audited. And because their record or they, their data is housed in an information system, they have to be audited, not just on the data itself, but they have to also audit the systems that the data resides on. Hence why we have IT auditors. So what IT audit is, is simply an examination of the system that houses a company's data whether it's financial data, whether it's um, operational data, whether it's whatever data they're housing in, in that system, we're, we're, we're um, evaluating whether the systems has what we call sufficient controls. Controls could be things like policies that are implemented in a system, right? Things like your password must be changed every 90 days. That's a um, that's a that's a policy. Um, things like um, you have to review who has access to your systems to ensure that if anyone no longer needs access, that access can be removed. That's a form of control, right? So we make sure that we evaluating through the, the system to figure out, does this system have sufficient controls to minimize risk, um, to ensure that data integrity is maintained, meaning that the data cannot be altered, right? So when um, an account receivable receivable person enters $50, that $50 will not be altered, right? Um, and also, we're testing these controls to make sure that the companies are not breaking any rules, right? Um, every industry has policies that they have to follow. So we, we're also testing to make sure that they're following those policies and they're in compliance with applicable rules and regulations. So to kind of just emphasize on like the the focus of why we audit, we audit for, t I, I kind of group them into two objectives. The first objective is focused on ensuring that management, when I say management, just replace that with company or your client. We focus on ensuring that our client has sufficient controls in place to help minimize risk. For any business out there, for you to be profitable, you have to entertain some level of risk, right? Because without risk, there's no profit. So every business knows that. However, too much risk can also affect the performance of your organization. So for that reason, we have what's called controls. Controls are meant to ensure that risk is managed to a tolerable level. For example, I'll Let's say that you have a house. Your business is a house, right? When you're building a house, you build a house with functionalities, being able to have rooms, being able to have a kitchen, being able to have um, a door to come in and out, right? However, with those functionalities also comes risk, okay? A risk could be that if I have a window and I don't have um, I don't have security on that window, a child can fall out. If I have a door and I don't have a lock, someone can break into my house. If I don't have cameras around my house, someone can break and steal and I won't know, right? So in order to minimize the risk so that my objective to be, to be able to live comfortably in my house is accomplished, I need to implement controls. Same thing applies to businesses, right? Businesses have objectives. For example, Walmart. Walmart, their objective is to simply serve their clients with um, various commodities, right? Various goods and services. But in order for them to fulfill that, they, they have to entertain some level of risk, such as theft, someone can steal, such as lack of training, so their employees may not be able to meet sales, right? All of those are risk that comes. But they know that they need to make money regardless of the risk, right? So in order to ensure that those risks are addressed to still ensure profit, Walmart may choose to implement controls.
they may choose to implement policies that governs how the operations of the organization will be run. They may choose to implement security cameras around all their facilities to monitor what the customers are doing, right? They may choose to train their employees on how to serve customers, right? All of these are controls that are implemented. So when we auditors are hired, our focus is to one, determine what is the objective of management's business and then we think about what is the potential risk that can hinder them from accomplishing their objectives, right? And then we talk, we can then talk about what controls has management put in place to help reduce those risks. And then the last thing is we test those controls to figure out, are they actually working? If you say that you have a lock on your door, is that lock actually working? If it's not working, the, the job is not being done, right? So in short, that is our primary focus is to make sure that management can accomplish their their objective in the low, with the lowest amount of risk. The second objective is to produce a report by we, the auditors, with, that includes our opinion of those controls. The reason being is that they, Organizations also have mandate, legal mandate. If if they are publicly traded, they have a mandate to disclose of the, the of their internal controls and also their financial statements, right? So our report is what the um think of the SEC or like the um the people holding the companies accountable, they they rely on our opinion to determine if these companies should be fined if there should be any penalty or if they're in compliance. So that's our secondary objective is to be able to issue these organization our, a report that has our opinion in it. And based on our opinion, they will take, um, they will take um, appropriate steps. Okay, so let's talk about how do we actually achieve how, how do we get from knowing what our objective is to actually getting an opinion or a conclusion on the state of an organization's information systems? Okay, so we follow a process and that process is what we're going to touch on through the period of our class, okay? And it's called the IT audit process or the IT audit steps. Um, and um, today, I'm not going in detail. I'm just giving a glimpse of what we will dissect in the class. So we follow, it's more like a four phase or four steps, but I'm breaking it down into three, okay? So the first one is planning. We plan for the audit. We perform field work. And then lastly, we report on what we identified, okay? So in the planning phase, we have a few activities that take place. In the planning phase, we make sure to figure out the scope of our work, meaning what are we looking to accomplish for this audit? What does the client want us to do? Do they want us to perform SOX? Do they want us to perform FISMA? Do they want us to help them implement a framework? Do they want us to, um, whatever they want, right? We're figuring out what is the scope of our work? What is the scope of our testing? And based on the scope of our testing, we put together what's called an engagement letter. An engagement letter is more of like a, think of it as a contractual, documented contractual um agreement between the client and we the auditors okay it details what we're going to do when we get on site how we will do it what our timing will be um who will be part of the team and when they can expect the um the final report all of that is included in the engagement letter or sometimes it's called a notification letter okay and as part of the planning phase two as well, we um, put together request documents that we want the client to provide to us in order for us to perform the testing. And then we hold what's called a kickoff meeting. A kickoff meeting is just, think of it as an introductory meeting between your client and the auditors. We That meeting gives us an opportunity to introduce ourselves to the client officially they get to know who we are, how many people are on the team, and we get to address any concerns that the clients may have before we actually start the work. Once all of that stuff is done, that's when we actually get in, get you know roll up our sleeves and start evaluating. Um, in the field work phase, 
a few things happens, okay? In the field work phase of, of an audit, we do a few things. One, we interview clients to understand what are your processes, right? How do you actually achieve your, um, how do you actually achieve your objective? If it's through, um, if you have like various processes with your, within your organization, we actually want to sit with those people so they can walk us through how they do their job. Meaning we may want to meet with a database admin because they're the ones who manage the databases. We may want to meet with a system engineer because they're also the ones who ensure that the system is up and running. We may want to meet with the end user of an application to figure out how do you use certain functionalities in the system, right? So we are meeting with them to understand their process. And as part of that, we're also getting evidence to support that understanding, right? Meaning if you tell me that your, um, your application has a password requirement and that password requirement is A, B, and C, I would ask you to pull it up or I'll ask you to provide me a screenshot of those requirements so I can make sure that it matches what you told us. So that's what we do with perform testing. And then we also have like status meetings that may happen a client may want to know have we identified anything in terms of issues right um they may want to know like are we still on track to meet our communicated timeline um are we experiencing any um delays or anything like that so we hold status meetings with the client um and then once we're done with our testing and everything that's when we transition to a reporting phase a reporting phase is pretty much as formally documenting our conclusion slash our opinion of what we identified. Meaning, as a result of all the evidence that we looked at, as a result of all the meetings that we, ha we, we had, this is our opinion this is our reasonable or <laughs> reasonable opinion right it, it, it we're not saying that it's it's the most accurate but we're only opining based on the fact that were presented to us within the period that we were on site so that report gets drafted various managers slash directors slash vps take a look at the, those reports and they give their um, approval. The reports get shared with the client. The client also gets a chance to, or the opportunity to push back on anything they don't agree on, if any, that's listed on the report because they wanna also make sure that they agree with the facts that are documented on the report, okay? And once that's done, um, we hold a closing meeting and we distribute the final report and then we may perform follow-ups if there was any issues or anything like that. So I've kind of condensed the process, but we're going to dissect this process even more. And we're going to talk about all the templates, all how, how we do the documentation, how we do the testing, how we interview clients, um, questions to ask, questions not to ask, how to word your questions. All of that, we're going to touch on it during our class. Um, but in short, this is what we mean when we sit in audit. It's a condensed process that can take a year, okay? So it's not, it's not this simple, but it's simple if you know, um, if you know the process. I will hold right there and just open the floor for questions. Um, any question, Uh, if there's no question, I'll, um, I can continue, but if there's any question, um, I want to uh, address questions regarding like the audit process or the audit objective now. Alrighty, let's continue. So types of auditors, um, there are many auditors there are many different types of auditors out there but i'm going to focus on different types of it auditors it audit is a very broad field and within it audit you're going to come across people with different people wearing different hats okay um some will fall into the category of what we call external auditors and then you will have some that fall into the category of what we call internal auditors. 
external auditors are auditors that work for an independent accounting firm okay so external auditors are can are hired by accounting firms such as Deloitte PwC KPMG RSM um, um, pretty much like all the um, accounting firms out there I can I can't think of all of them but you're working for an accounting firm and the model that accounting firms follow is that so accounting firms offer different type of services they offer accounting services they offer tax services they offer consulting advisory they also offer audit okay so you as an IT auditor you will be sitting under the audit umbrella of an accounting of an accounting firm helping them perform audits for their clients so the model that um, accounting firms follow is that they're there to serve clients okay so they pitch their um, they pitch their um, their they pitch their proposal to various clients out there let's say that Walmart is looking for an um, is looking for an auditor um, Freddie Mac is looking for an auditor um, Capital One is looking for an auditor these accounting firms they pitch to them and they win work so they win a lot of work at the same time okay and in order to fulfill that work they need to hire people so they'll hire you so you become what's called a consultant working on behalf of an accounting firm we call it external audit because you're working for the clients okay and you may be juggling multiple clients at the same time okay and your requirement to the client is only for the duration of your audit and then that that obligation ends right there and you hop to the next client okay so it's a client to client model that they follow and external auditors they report to PCAOB um, PCOB is like the body that governs what um, they're they're pretty much there to ensure that external auditors are not breaking any rules and they're doing what they're supposed to do. OK, um, whereas internal auditors, on the other hand, you work on behalf of your company that hired you. OK, you are the company's own employee. OK, meaning that let's say Raina solutions right now, if we grow so big to the point where we have audit mandate or audit requirement, we may hire one of you to serve as an internal auditors working for us. OK, so in that capacity, you're not necessarily a cons you're not working on a consultant basis, meaning from one client to another, your only client is your company we call that internal audit okay um, and the functions of external auditors and internal auditors are I will say like 95% the same with minor differences like who we report to and things like that but the skill set that you learn in class um, will equip you to serve in external audit or internal audit capacity um, I've worked in both I actually started my career in external audit and then eventually I transitioned into internal audit and then I transitioned out of internal audit into risk management positions so I can tell you the pros and cons of each right so external audit the pros is that you get to learn about different industries so it's it's fast knowledge fast knowledge in the sense that because you're going from one client to another you learn so much so quick the downside of that is it's a lot of work <laughs> um, I remember my external audit days sometimes I'm juggling three four clients at a time it can be a lot of work especially during busy seasons that's the downside okay but at the same time because it's a lot of work you get quick knowledge that allow that can allow you to pivot from you know from external to internal really quickly and also the pay the pay tends to be a lot higher in external audit reason being that their budget they don't have any budget constraint right they're they're winning work all the time so they have um, um, they have a lot of um, they have a lot of a lot of needs so they're always looking for people to fulfill that need but at the same time they get a lot of turnovers meaning people leave fast because 
they give you good money you go in there you realize oh shoot it's a lot of work let me help out you get what i'm saying but for young folks i remember i started my career very young right i was at the time what i think i was 19 or so so very young no responsibility right no kids no husbands to take care of so i was able to just you know get into my work and do whatever they tell me and you know build up my skill set from there on right uh, another thing that comes with external audit is travel depending on um depending on your role it may require travel so if you're someone who's looking for something that's a bit more stable you know no stress <laughs> not saying that there won't be stress in internal audit but kind of like um something a bit more low profile and slow-ish then internal audit is for you but if you are a fast-paced person and you like challenges and you like to be exposed to different clients external audit is for you and external audit is really good too because because you work on different clients you get to learn about different industries you know one client may be in the pharmaceutical industry another one may be in technology industry another one may be in e-commerce another one may be hospital right so because you're hopping on these clients, you get to know what they do. You get to learn about their services and it can also help you business wise too as well. Internal audit on the other hand can be a little slower, a little slower in the sense that, um, you don't have to juggle multiple clients at the same time. You're only focused on the objectives that your company wants you to accomplish, right? You're only focused on making sure that your company is um, achieving their audit requirements and things of that nature. Um, the pay can sometimes be a little lower than external audit and the um, career progression, meaning being able to be promoted from one level to another, can also be a little slower than external audit. Um, most public accounting firms they follow a two-year model meaning you work in one position two years um given that your performance is up to part you can be quite you can qualify for a promotion so you're able to work up the ladder a little faster than internal audit a lot of times with what i what i've seen in internal audit is if you only get promoted when there's actually an opening for a promotion, which sometimes if the retention rate for a company is really high, meaning people are not leaving left and right, it may not happen anytime soon, you know? So, you know, you, you, you just have to wait your, what you need and based off of that, make a choice, but either one of them is, um, is not bad. And talking about career opportunities, um, talking about career opportunities like i said earlier it audit is very broad right you can either choose to go more on the internal audit routes like i discussed or you can choose to go on the public accounting route doing external audit right you can choose to work under it compliance it compliance is not necessarily internal audit it compliance is what we call first line of defense right so you're working for management um you're not working for audit um, i'm going to explain it a little better so auditors are there to check if things have been done okay meaning you're supposed to have passwords in place do you have it or you don't have it compliance on the other hand you not only check you also help management implement those things in place okay so you're you're kind of like working with management um to put those things in place or another role is under it risk management which it's it's concurrent to like compliance where it risk management focuses heavily on risk if you are a person let's say that when, when we get through the risk um, risk management aspect of our class and you realize that you really enjoy risk and assessing risk and coming up with the mitigating plan for those risks if that's something that you enjoy then IT risk management is a route for you because under IT risk management you're not necessarily auditing the systems or working under internal audit you're there to help identify risk assess those risks and report on those risks and track um, the progression of those risks within your company. That's also a, another route, right? That you can go in with your audit skills set. 
that you have that or that you will have um Consulting is also another option. If you want to work on a contract to contract basis, you can choose to do that too as well. There are a lot of contracts um, that are, especially right now because of the, the great resignation where everybody, <laughs> most people have just chosen to either quit their job or transition industry. There's a lot of contracts out there that are looking to be filled. So, and contracts tend to come with the higher pay because they're especially those that are short term, right? So there's always money in there too as well. Or you can choose to go more on the PCI security specialist route. PCI focuses um, focuses on card industries. Like so for companies that processes large um, data, large financial data, um, they have a PCI mandate. So we touch on PCI as part of our class and with that skill set, you can always go that route too as well. And then I talked about compliance or you can choose to go the cybersecurity route. Cybersecurity and IT audit, it's like husband and wife. It, it goes hand in hand. The skill set that you give from IT audit is transferable to cybersecurity too as well. The only difference is that cybersecurity focuses on cybersecurity route, so, sorry, cybersecurity risk, whereas IT audit focuses on every other risk, including cybersecurity risk, okay? So, so what you learn in class or the IT audit skill can be transitioned to, can be used to pivot into cybersecurity if that's your, um, that, if that's your goal, your long-term goal. So I'll pause right there and just ask any question. Okay, I see someone asked the question here. Um, they said, when you are doing this kind of work, um, can someone mute themselves? Okay, when you are doing this kind of work, are you working with team or are you working on your own? Good question. So when you're doing this work, IT audit is a team driven work. Okay. Most of the time you're working as part of a team. Okay. Depending on the size of the project, it can go from a team of two people to a team of 20, 30 people, depending on how big of an engagement it is. But oftentimes, um, especially if you are an associate or a senior, you will work as part of a team. However, I will say that there may be instances where you're the only person on the team, okay? it's That's also, <laughs> that's also very possible. It's not the norm, but it's also very possible that there may be an engagement out there where you're working by yourself with like, the supervision of a manager. Any other question? Hi, Ms. Rina. Um, my name is Fatima. I actually was curious to know, is IT auditing more like a segue to the different career opportunities that are listed, or will these be the opportunities that are available to us upon completion of the course? Good question. So these are the opportunities that are available to you with you having IT audit skills set. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes. So, when you talk about PCI specialist, uh, security specialist, how does credit card relate to auditing? And I don't know if you are going to teach PCI DSS or it's a different story altogether. Good question. So, PCI security assessment, well, PCI DSS is a security assessment, okay? And the question that you ask is, how does that relate to auditing? It relates to auditing because these um, merchants, meaning companies that processes credit card data, they process sensitive information, right? They process your credit card information and with fraud and all these like um, security threats out there, PCI ensures that if you are processing large credit card data, meaning if you are processing people's personal identifiable information, your date of birth, right? Your addresses, they have it in their systems. 
if you if if you shop on Amazon, right? Amazon has your personal information. So PCI ensures that if you're gonna process people's personal information, your systems or your um the tools and your the systems that you use to process the data to record the data and to save that data, that's those those systems must have established predefined security configurations. So we as auditors we get hired to assess whether the merchant has those security um, configuration or security measures implemented properly and that they're working. And as part of our class, we will go over PCI DSS. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Wow, today's quiet. <laughs> today's session is very quiet. I, li I like to um, be, um, I like to hear from you guys. So if you have questions, please, please feel free to ask. Um, there's no such thing as a stupid question, right? If I said something that wasn't clear and you want me to repeat, I'm always happy to. So feel free to ask questions. One thing that I didn't touch on is salary. Most people want to know how much can I expect to make at the end of um, if I do get a job in IT audit, right? So as you can see, I didn't have a slide for that. And I initially I used to have a slide for that, but I chose not to have a slide for that because your income projection is really up to you <laughs> when it comes to audit or when it comes to IT, you know, audit being a component of IT. When it comes to audit, your income projection is real. Um, it, it's really up to you. A lot of variable plays, right? Um, with your location plays a big role, right? Cost of living in your area plays a big role. But from what I've seen, I'll kind of give you a range so you know what to negotiate for. So normally, um, so I'll give you an outline of the different positions that you can pot potentially be placed in. You can either start off as an associate, right, or a staff auditor, meaning that's around the range of zero to three years of experience. That that that's where you fall into, right? Um, or you can sh you can potentially which oftentimes happens with our student, you fall into the senior level. The senior level is between three to five years of experience. And mind you, associate, they're assuming you're out of college, no experience at all, right? And then the senior, you have some level of experience, uh, so three to five years. And then you have sometimes some other companies, they have a supervisor role. A supervisor role is just one like one level above senior, but not too far off. So sometimes I've seen where it's three to six, oh, sorry, four to six years of experience, that's supervisor. And then you have the manager, director, VP, SVPs, and things of that nature and partners. So for, I'll give you a salary range. So for, for someone who is between who is an who is an associate, which which means between zero to three years of experience. Um, I've seen the salary range from seventy to sometimes eighty eighty k. Okay, um, depending on the states, I've also seen some people start at sixty five, which I won't even recommend you to start that low at all, and I'll tell you why later. Um, so seventy to about eighty k k is a good range for associate, and then for the senior roles. Um, you're looking at a range of at a range of about at a range of about 80 sometimes to 100 or 90k or 95k okay that's the range for senior and then supervisor you're looking at 100 to 120 or 130 and then manager can really go from 1 130 to even 160 or 180 and then above so that's the range but I've seen this range, um, devi I've seen people deviate from the range, and it all really depends on how you negotiate your offer. Um, because one thing I can tell you is that these companies have money, <laughs> right? They have money to pay you, but you sell yourself. When you see it in front of an interviewer, you're the product they want to purchase. So you set the tone and you get to negotiate how much they're purchasing you for. Because I'm telling you, the work is done when you're negotiating. 
once you've negotiated a, an offer and you start working, it's a lot harder to renegotiate that offer. Okay. I will give you an example. Let's say that I start off at my first, my first job, which was an experience associate. I started off at 75. Really, I could have started off at 80, but I didn't negotiate anything. I was just so excited to get the job, right? <laughs> I was a college student, broke college student, no money. So 75000 75, sounded like, wow, it's a lot of money, right? <laughs> and I was being cheated. But anyways, so I started off at 75 and I was excited to start. I was excited to have the job. But the reality is that it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work that you will do. So when you compare the level of work, it's taking you away from your family, right? For me, it involved traveling. I was traveling pretty much, I was out of state Sunday to Thursday, sometimes Friday. So in reality, the only time I got to be with my family was Saturday a full a full day would be Saturday or sometimes half day Friday. So the hours that I spent away from home didn't when you do the analysis didn't match the salary that I was getting paid, right? And then come to think of it, um out of conversation I was having a conversation with one of my um my my teammates and they told me they were getting 95 for the same role as me. So guess who got cheated? I got cheated. Can I blame them the other teammates? No. They probably negotiated better than I did, right? But my point being that, so first year I started 75. Um, second year, they do a evaluation, right? And they give you a raise. They may give you a bonus, right? That bonus moved me from 75 to 80, 80K. Not much. However, when I did the jump from, um, when I did the jump from that position, that consulting role to, um to um to a senior role um i chose to negotiate differently i learned the hard way so now during that interview when they asked me what is your because they'll ask you what are you looking for in terms of in, ter in terms of income right i told them mind you i was making 80 yes yeah, 75 to 80 i was was it 75 to 80 i think i was making 80 at the time when they told me how much are you looking for i negotiated way all the way up okay i gave them i'm looking between 100 to 120 and i asked them the question of i'm interested to know what is um what does the role have to offer in terms of salary because oftentimes when they give you they throw the ball at you they're looking to see what range you're going to give them but I always encourage you to throw the ball back at them for them to give you a range and then you negotiate off of the range they give you. But anyways, that's a, we'll talk more about that later. Any question with what I've just said? What I've just said. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Okay, we I had a question. Yeah. For someone like me who was trying to deviate from accounting, because I'm currently a senior accountant, I was looking to see which of these career opportunities would be the best and uh, with the knowledge I already have, would be the best to venture into. Good question. So um, accounting is a really good transferable skill. Uh, um, most of the auditing that we do, we audit financial systems because that's what we really care for. The systems that are um, that companies are utilizing to re record, um, record their financials, right? So we're always looking for someone that has some sort of financial background so they can help us sometimes interpret some of the financial transactions that we may see in the systems. So really, you can you can thrive in any of these roles because if you think about PC, PCI DSS, guess what? It's financial data. If you think about internal audit, there's a financial component requirement, SOX, financial statement audit requirements in internal audit, right? If you think about public accounting, financial audit requirements in there too as well. If you think about compliance, it can be 50-50, right? So for you having the financial background, I would say it's really just up to you and what your comfort level is at the end of the class.
Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I also have a question to pick, to piggyback off of um, what Tolu just asked, because I'm in the same um, situation. So right now I'm also in accounting and mm -hmm. I am trying to merge to the IT side, but based on the levels you just talked about, um, would it be like recommended to go for the supervisory level or the senior level? How many oh, years of experience do you have? <laughs> How many years? For me, I have about five years. Five years. Okay. Five years. Okay. Um, I would recommend that you go between senior and supervisor level, because the reason being is that um, the associate level, mm -hmm. you fall more into that if you don't know some of the soft skills that comes with working in corporate America. For anybody who has had experience in corporate America, you can thrive as a senior because two things makes up you being a senior. One of them is knowing the technical knowledge, which you'll get from the class, right? Like knowing how to do the job, right? The other aspect of you thriving in your role is knowing the soft skills, knowing how to schedule meetings, knowing how to interact with your, your teammates, knowing how to set goals, um, knowing how to... Um, knowing how to address difficult situations, knowing how to position yourself such that your managers actually see what you're doing and it's not going under the radar, right? Um, knowing how to communicate during meetings, knowing how to talk to clients. Those are the soft skills that college students don't have and they're having to learn, right? And the associate level teaches them that. But for you who has had that experience, I would say like you, I can see that you can thrive in the senior slash supervisor role, right? We've actually had one of our, one of our students, um, she went through our class and at the end of the class, well, she actually started applying before the class even ended. Um, when she applied, the second, first offer didn't come through, second offer came through and it was a senior role with, um, I think it was Verizon. And then the other, another offer came through. It was a manager role. Um, and that offer, I think, was like 140 or so. Um, that's just to tell you that you don't have to, <laughs> don't lowball yourself. You know, if you can bet on anybody, bet on yourself. And if you feel that you have what it takes to get the role, go for it. You know, go for it. But it's important that you know the, the you have the knowledge you know, to complement it. So focus more on getting the technical knowledge of how to actually do the job. And then you can talk about what makes sense based on what I know. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So when you say 80 to 100K, and normally you ask uh, how much it in the air out how do you speak a little out? loud dennis can you speak a little louder because i'm having trouble hearing you yeah so when you talk about 80k how much is it per hour because we know more per hour than 80k so how do you figure that one oh that's easy so they're they're app on Google that can break down your salary and break it down to our, our hourly rate. So you can just put it on Google and they'll, it, it'll give you a breakdown of like what that, what that is per hour. Thank you. Actually, let, let me, let me, let me, let me show it to you. So that way you, let me go to the, Okay, so what I've just typed here is salary to hourly calculator. They have so many of them, but I use this one most of the time. Is this the one I use? No, this is the paycheck calculator. I don't want that one. Let me go back. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Let's come back. Let's come back here. I see it. Okay. I think it should be around like thirty eight or 30. So let's say that my annual salary is a hundred you say eighty, right? So let's say that my annual salary is eighty. All right, so the hourly wage you're looking at about 30, let's round it to like 39. So about $39 per hour. Yeah, so it's it's easy to calculate it. You, you can just go in Google. So whatever salary you're looking at, um, you actually brought up a good point. Whatever salary you're looking at, it's always good to also have um, hourly um your hourly rate because um, most recruiters who are looking at um, contract opportunities, they always want to know what your hourly rate as well as what your salary rate. The salary one matters more when you are um, W-2, right? But if you're looking to go 1099 or contract, they want to know more the hourly route. Um, one person said, do you have to be a green card holder or a U.S. citizen to get a job? Is work permit okay? Um, work permit is okay for some employers, but not all. If you are looking for federal um, federal opportunities, meaning like working for the government or working on government contract, you will have to be a U.S. citizen. Um, if you are looking to work on contracts that or if you are looking to work on projects that requires clearance you'll have to be a u.s citizen but everything else it's just green card is the um is what's required and i want to say like work permit it can is also can also be taken but um that's on a case-to-case -case basis most of the time i have a question sure uh Ver an internal versus external auditor. Um, is there much? I guess it's a twofold question. Is there variance in salary in regards to the internal and external? I mean, I know you mentioned there's some travel related to. I believe it was external. And then, are there now with these days and times? Um, is there much remote work, and how does remote work work in this instance? Good question. So. The first question in in terms of like salary difference, um, I I will say that there there is a slight difference. Um, if you are looking for entry position, they tend external tends to pay a lot higher for entry positions. But in terms of like manager level role slash senior level role, it will I will say like it cuts even right um like for me um uh, for what i've seen most people do is they go the external route because it's easier for you to work your way up the ladder in the external capacity it's easy for you to get promoted to a senior so what i've seen most people do is get into external work your way up to the senior role the the benefit is that you get quick experience and quick skill set right and then when you get to the senior slash manager role you then hop transition into um, transition into um, internal, right? Um, but at that level, it's it, you're able to cut even in terms of like salary. But again, I was I just say that it boils down to how you negotiate because I've even seen cases where people going the external route still get <laughs> some low ball salary right because they didn't negotiate well and vice versa too as well so it boils down to how you negotiate but if you negotiate if you negotiate well they'll see your worth and they'll pay you what you are worth um and in terms of in terms of like um remote work you are right now i'm seeing more remote opportunities for audit audit role However, the caveat is that going back to the external, because you are client facing, there needs to be that client interaction. So when everything goes back, although it's still remote right now, when everything goes back to normal, you may still have to be going to client sites because the client needs to see you. Some client needs to see you, not all of them, right? So I would just say it depends. I've seen people in consulting that are 
also working fully remote even before the pandemic um but i'm seeing it more now than before internal audit side it's always been like that there's always a lot of remote opportunity thank you i have a question sure i'm more like a statement i I was in the um, finance and accounting industry and um, I transitioned to academia a number of years ago. And my overall focus was on financial analysis and reporting. And um, I lecture statistics and, you know, quantitative analysis on a whole. How for me completing this, um, this, this, this course, you know, how will what I learn here will, um, I can bridge with what I had before. <laughs> Good question. Um, the honest truth is that it may not merge well. Okay. Okay. And that's totally okay. Mm -hmm. We've had people who transition from nursing to IT audit. Okay. <laughs> once they're done with their tra once they've taken a training, their IT audit resume will not contain any nursing experience because it's just not a as it doesn't it doesn't merge well okay? okay so what will happen is that when you do take the training um we work with someone who helps our students develop their resume so you your resume will be more focused on the experience that you've gotten from the class okay okay mm -hmm. reason being is that you want to focus your you want your resume has to focus on what the market is looking for if you want to get into that industry for example we can choose you can say that you know what i'm holding on to my 10 years of experience that I've had in academia because I don't want to let, let it go. And I'm just going to complement it with it audit experience. Right. Mm -hmm. You can, you can do that. That's, that's doable. But the reality is that when you put your resume out there in the market, they're going to rather go with someone who has more audit experience listed on the resume versus someone who has maybe 12 years of a combined experience. So that's why if your skill is not transferable, meaning it's not, um, it's not what audit is looking for. I would mm -hmm. highly advise that you tailor it more to what the industry is looking for, which um, we can totally do that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, hi, Rebecca. Hi. Um, hi. Yeah, I had a question regarding what you just mentioned. Um, for me, I've walked my way up from being an accountant intern to um, being a senior accountant right now. Um, do you think there is more like a transferable skill um, because I've been doing accounting for like eight years. So um, I yeah. was wondering if there's like a transferable skill when it comes to, you know, building a resume and um, yeah, putting I, it in I, line I, with IT audit. Sure. I always say that accounting I is definitely transferable. Even Stephanie was the one. Sorry. Can you mute? Stephanie was the one. Sorry. I'm getting some back. Right. Stephanie was the one talking, right? So even Stephanie, I have to look at like your pre prior resume. I can then I can be able to better advise you because potentially you may have something that can still be combined with your audit experience, right? But to to answer your question in short, yes, you can you can still include that. But how you include it also matters because when you're tailoring your resume, you have to remember that you're looking to get into IT. You're not looking to get an accounting job, right? So put put your accounting experience in the back burner when you're developing your IT resume focus more on putting the IT experience on the resume. Um, as part of the class, we have a session where we talk about resume building and how to go about with putting the stuff that you learn in class on your resume such that um, it can be marketable to recruiters. Um, okay. So me again, I'm Rebecca Stephanie. So I, I, am, I am still into financial analysis and reporting and data analysis. I teach statistics, so, you know, oh, I, I, I analyze data all the time. So I just wanted to to see how would I fit in? Would this like be IT risk management or? Oh, I you know, see, like I that. see. Okay, so you did more like data and so you have data analytics yeah. um, as well as some financial. Okay, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so data, and well, so 
thank you for clarifying that because that kind of puts it in perspective now. So I just thought it was more academia, you know, <laughs> but. Um, oh, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. So with data analytics is also a good skill to have. And I would say that that's also a transferable skill in addition to the, fin the financial side. Uh, the reason being that we have financial, so to put it into perspective, we are auditing financial systems, okay? The system stores financial data. And then we have the financial auditors that are looking at the transactions within the financial systems. So sometimes the financial auditors give us reports to review, okay? To do some analysis on those reports to tell them if the report are complete or not. In that mm -hmm. case, that's where the need for someone who understands finance comes in, as well as the need of someone who knows data analytics, someone who can help us process large, um, large amount of data fast, right? Mm -hmm. So that's my area. Mm -hmm. To to that point, data analytics is a complementary skill set that can also be leveraged in some scenarios with IT audit. As far as like where within these career opportunities you can fit in, I see more of data analytics opportunities in external audits because they deal more with large clients and those clients have a need for data analysis and stuff like that. So external is actually a good opportunity for you as well as I don't want to say risk management, but I will say more of like internal, internal audit too as well. Um, okay. IT compliance, you can still fit in here. Um, if you want to still be able to leverage the, I, I, I want to also add that if you want to still leverage that skill set, then what I said will give you that. But if you want to just be able to, to transfer that knowledge into something completely different, then risk yeah. management can still work because risk management requires some level of an analytical skill, right? Because you're analyzing risk, you're thinking about the probability and likelihood of different scenarios, right? So in a way, you're still using your analytic skill, but not necessarily to analyze data, but to analyze um, scenarios. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Any other question, guys? Um, all right. I think someone asked here. So they say that this is from YouTube. They went through a web based training in information system audit, but have project management experience. What should I aim for? Um, project management experience is also a good, um, transferable skill, right? Because when you think about audit, you, you're performing different audit sometimes at the same time, and you have to be able to manage your own, um, manage your project, especially at a senior level. If you're looking to be at a senior level, some seniors are given the responsibility of managing the, the associates. And as well as managing the budget of the project, managing the deliverables that are being delivered and managing the relationship with the client, right? So project management experience can also be transferred over to IT audit. In terms of like which one of these career opportunities you should look into, I would say all of them because all of these opportunities, you perform project in them, you execute project in them. So you will, that skill set is used in all of them. It just depends on um, what you gravitate more towards and what you're more comfortable with. We go through so many um, projects in class that at the end of the class, some students <laughs> will discover that uh, I'm not really good with risk analysis or risk assessment. So I don't want to put that on my resume. Or, oh, I'm not too good with um, financial statement audits, so I don't really feel comfortable putting it on my resume. You will see that you your scope of the career opportunities you want will be a bit more focused. But at the same time, I don't want you to limit yourself to just one career opportunity because you may see a job that says um, internal audit, SOCs, financial statement experience required, and you shy away from that because you only want to go for the public accounting route versus that could have also still been a good opportunity for you. So make sure, just broaden your scope 
I encourage my students to just apply to everything that suits what you have on your resume, whether it's internal, whether it's external, because you can always turn it down if it doesn't fit what you're looking for eventually. But don't turn it down without entertaining it first. All right, let's continue. Um, I'm gonna come to this slide later because I want we have some of our students here with us. Um, I wanted to talk about the class. So the class is actually starting next Saturday, okay? We like to use the first, technically, quote unquote, the first day of class, which is today, to be more of an informational session. So today is the informational session, but we get into the lectures and stuff on sat starting next Saturday. And the time for the class is from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturdays. We break around 12 Eastern time. And then on Thursdays, we have a review session in the evening from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time too as well. Um, every session of our class is recorded and the video the, the video recording is uploaded on the classroom, which I'll show you guys how to navigate there. Um, and then the location, it, it's a virtual class. So it's a WebEx class that we hold. Um, for those who are not yet registered and you do wish to register for our training, um, we have a link that we have a registration page that we require you to register and upon you registering you will get a welcome email from us with um, additional information on how to join the class um i'm i'm gonna pivot and share the the classroom so once you register and you get the email notification from us it will contain a link for you to join our google classroom this is the platform where you have you'll get access to everything um let me go to the last session this is the platform where you'll get access to everything on here we post announcement um on here you'll have access to all the class note all the projects will be on here um, the course syllabus is on here. If you want to ask questions, if you post it on here, I'll see it and I'll be able to respond to it. You can always message me um, separately too as well. Um, our notes is broken down into modules. So you'll see a total of about nine modules on here. Um, each module will have each module will have a few things. You'll, you'll have the, the note and the presentation you will have the homework on there too as well. And then you will have the recordings. You will have the class recording and um, you'll have example files. So all the files that we gonna, all the files that I go over, they're also on here for you to save a copy l later um, for your own need and trust me it will come a point in life where you probably need these templates so we'll go over all the templates that you need um how to fill them out how to populate them how to document your testing all of that um, we'll go over them in class um, we have a total of about four projects four pro four in class project and one project that you're going to do at your own time one project that you're going to do at a later time at your own time so a total of about five projects um, that we will go over together in class um, i want to walk you guys through the through the syllabus really quick So this is our course syllabus. It, you can also find this in the classroom. Um, so week one will be IT basics. So this is mainly for anyone who does not have IT background, right? If you don't have any form of IT background at all, this is the class for you. And we like to do this as a first, <laughs> do this as the first um, lecture to set that 
foundational knowledge of what is an application, what is a database, what is a operating system, what is a network, right? So we're setting that foundation because you will be auditing information systems. So there's a level of IT that you have to kind of be familiar with and know, right? Because when you're interviewing a client, you're speaking the IT lingo. So you have to kind of know these terminologies and how everything works together. So Nana will cover that. And then following that, that's when I pick up. So you, you'll see me quite often. So week two, week two is the IT audit introduction, right? Some of the stuff I went over today, I'm going to go over in the intro session in further detail. And then the IT audit process. So we three we have two projects that we're going to go over we're going to do the announcement letter slash engagement letter so we're going to do that as a project and then we're going to do the pbc list as a project too as well so by week three you will know how to document an announcement letter or engagement letter you will know how to document a request list week four that's where we get into the hands-on stuff so week four we start talking about control walkthrough, control testing, right? So we're gonna test two controls in week four. We're gonna do, we're gonna test the control in logical, we're gonna test the control in job scheduling. So this is where we talk about how to populate your testing sheet. We talk about how to document your note um, or your walkthrough understanding and things like that, how to document issues, right? Week five, we continue with testing. So we're going to spend quite some time in te um, performing testing. So week five, we do two more projects, focusing on logical and then focusing on change management. We're going to talk about the, um, we're going to talk about COSO, COVID and SOX testing. And then week six, uh, we talk about A123, risk management, and then application control. Week seven, PCI DSS, SOC audit, HIPAA, and then week eight, the frameworks, we talk about resume preps, and then we start talking about interview preps and stuff like that. And then week nine is the IT infrastructure. So we talk about infrastructure testing, um, which Nana will cover. So as you can see, it's a heavily loaded class. It's a lot of information that you're going to get. Um, so what I always tell people is that if you don't have time to study outside of the class, then you may end up not getting the best or the most out of this class. So I always make sure that in addition to the time that we're going to spend together, make sure you take out, you make time to read the note, make time to watch or rewatch the recordings that will be uploaded and make time to ask questions and do the homework and do all the project. If you do the project, I promise you that the interviews will be easy. If you don't do the project <laughs> and you don't read your note, then I don't know, <laughs> you know, so, but anyways, but I'm always here. Nana is always here to also be, um, be of use to you guys. Um, the recordings are available to you. So after the class is done, you have access, you'll, you'll have access to, to this class portal for six months. And after six months, we need to archive it to make space for our other classes. So once we archive the class, you will no longer have access to the classroom. All the documents are downloadable. Okay. So you can download all the documents that we upload on, we upload on here. However, you cannot download the recordings, okay? The recordings are not downloadable. They're pr proprietary materials, but you can always, within that six months, you can listen to the recordings as many times as you want. It will be on here available to you. My hope is that before that six months is up, you have a job and you won't necessarily need the recording. But in any case, um, you have access to the notes and all the documents. Um, we release the note on a weekly basis. So for example, um, on, on Monday of this week, you will have all these files that you see in the draft mode. Once we release them, you will have access to them. So once we release it, I always ask that you read ahead of time. So try to read the presentation slides, um, the homework you may want to hold off until we do the class so you can understand it better and be able to complete the homework. And then the recordings are uploaded um, a day or two after the class. 
um, joining the joining class next Saturday. So if you are registered and you've received an email from us, I will see you here. Okay. If you are here, it means that you have access to this portal. So all you have to do is come to this portal and then come under, um, come under online class WebEx links in this folder. I've up, I have a document that walks you through how to join the WebEx. Okay. So if you want guidance on how to join the WebEx, this is like step-by-step -step document that I put together that walks you through how to join the WebEx class. Um, but I'm going to walk you through that right now. So to join the WebEx class, it's very easy. Um, let me see. You come to the portal, come under the folder that says online class WebEx link. For Saturday class, you have to use the Saturday class WebEx link. Okay, so you come to the Saturday class WebEx folder and the link is here. The meeting password is here. Okay, so you will just have to click on there. Um, same thing for the Thursday class WebEx. Okay, you have to use this link for Thursday. If you use this Saturday link for Thursday, it's not going to work. You won't find anybody in that room. So you have to use the Thursday link for for Thursday class okay um, and that's pretty much it it's very simple I made I put it here so that way um, it's easily accessible for all of you um, any question all right let me check on YouTube um, I think some people may have questions on YouTube Okay, someone says that I'm in insurance. I am in insurance industry now. I am an employee benefit counselor and I have about 10 years plus experience. Do I apply for an associate or senior IT auditor? Um, it will depend on how well versed you become with your technical IT audit, IT audit experience or IT audit knowledge. Um, because if you're looking to transition into IT audit, then the the um, insurance um, the the experience that you that you got from the insurance industry is not really what they will be looking for. They'll be looking at how well you know how to do your job as an IT auditor, and based off of that, I can probably um, advise that you go more for a senior role than an associate role. I encourage our students to go for the senior role than the associate role. Sure. Someone is asking, um, how much is the training? Sure. Our training is 2800 um, and we break out the payments in four installments. So we don't require the full payment. Um, initially upon registration you don't need the full payment upon registration but we break out the payment into four installments once you register um you get an email from us with the payment plan and everything um the initial deposit is due um on the first day of class um but again um we're flexible for those who are not able to meet the four installment plan we can always find a a better um a better plan that works for you but we just require that you communicate that with us we also offer a referral program for our students who who have ref if you refer someone to our class we offer a 200 refer um, bonus to anyone who um who refers students to our class um i'm gonna transition i have a few of our former students who have joined us guys thank you guys for coming um i appreciate your presence here so i wanted to bring them um on board so they can just talk about their experience in the class talk about their more importantly i wanted them to talk about their experience working either as an it auditor or working in some sort of um it capacity within their current role so i see that um let me see let me see who joined I see, um, I see Fabiola joined. 
Familio is here. So if you, you guys, if you can just unmute yourself and feel free to just hop in and talk and um, and then we can transition to the next person, etc. Hi everyone. Hi Rebecca. Hi. Yes, this is Fumilayo. Hi Fumilayo. Yeah, I want to say a big congratulations to every one of you that are here. So it was a great experience for me. I Not... can't hardly hear. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, much better. Yeah, I want to say a big congratulations to everyone that are here because uh, it was quite a great opportunity for me because um, Nana and Rebecca did a great job. I want to use this opportunity to as well as encourage us to pay very good attention to the class because this is basically hands-on experience. These are the kind of experience you, uh, you're going to experience at work. So I had the opportunity to go through the class and uh, I started work like four months ago as an IT uh, compliance analyst. And um, most of the training that I went through, so I was exposed to, you know, the applications, the operating system. So I have a better knowledge. So starting uh, with the understanding of uh, IT or application and all that, that Nana is going to teach from the, the day one. It's very important. So I want to encourage us to pay attention to all the details because these are what you're going to, just like uh, Rebecca used to say, we're going to dirty your hands with. Those are the things you're going to see live. And the, the, the control matrix, you know, your understanding of the risk, all those things, you're going to actually see them in place. So I want us to encourage us. And also our soft skill, the soft skill, your understanding of Excel and the analytical tools experience is very important because I happen to deal with a lot of data. So let's be more attentive. Let's put in efforts. Let, just like she said earlier, you have to be ready to put in extra time after the class so that you will have the details. You have a, a full understanding of what, what they teach us because this is what you're going to experience. They really did a great job. And I give that kudos. So your being there in this class is a great opportunity. And I want us to pay full attention. This is one of the best IT audits, you know, training around. I bet you because I happen to have gone through other trainings even before I came to their training. And, uh, you know, I can tell you with full assurance that you are in the right place. So please let's put in all the best we can because even the money they are taking you at the end of the day you will see that it's it's worth it it actually worth it if you can make the best use of it because i am a witness i'm actually you know like i happen to get a kind of job that i don't have a, a lot of team members it was me and my manager and i came in during the the means of a, a review so there was nobody to to really train me or tell me what to do so based on the training that i've gone for uh gone through with rena i was able to you know jump in i was able to study the previous years you know review and all that and i was able to jump in and uh, i was able to actually do the job we had the annual uh, recertification access review. So I was able to be fully part of it, you know, and uh, uh, based on the training, 
I quickly gained an understanding. I was able to talk to the reviewer. I'm able to walk them through, you know, train them on what and what is expected. And uh, presently now, I have to respond to the, the auditor's uh, request. So, you know, the training has really prepared me to be able to handle all this responsibility and more. So, I mean, it kind of is a kind of encouraging every one of us that are here to let me put in effort, learn as much as we can, and believe in ourselves, and we can do it. Thank you. Thank you, Familio. Thank you. Anybody Good morning, else? everyone. Um, my name is Tola. Um, I am one of the um, people who just finished the last class. So I want to take this opportunity to just say thank you to Reina once again. I want to say, just like Fumilaya said, we cannot overemphasize the fact that you are in the right place and the best place for that matter. And I say that with my full test, as we will, um, as uh, that's a strict slang. So um, I had initially taken a class that was way more expensive um, than Rainer's class. When I say way more expensive, I know what I'm talking about. And I'm, I'm really, I mean, so you know what I mean? So I started, I got a job. I did my own due diligence and I got a job but I could not defend my resume. I could not perform what I said I could perform before I got the job. I struggled a lot on the job for months, for, for, for over a year, trust me, they stopped giving me assignments and I started feeling so bad. You know, that feeling when you can't even, um, when you cannot um, do what you said you can do. And I had to resign because I would call my dance teacher to ask questions. He would just tell me, go to Google, go on Google, go and check it. Everything you're asking is on Google. That's if I call him five times, he's going to respond just one time and it would, it would send me directly to Google. So I resigned because I was frustrated. I just said, nope, I'm not doing this again. I'm not going back there. So I was, I was going to change my career. I was going to give up on IT audits. I know I told it is easy, but you know, you just need somebody to point you to some certain things. The class I did was a waste of time and a waste of money. I met other people that we did the class together. No one got a job. Um, and the few that got um, some jobs, they could not fully, they could not even defend the, 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 the resume. So I was just trolling one day, you know, I just saw this class on um, YouTube. Then I listened to one of their walkthrough classes and I thought to myself, what? Who is this person? Then I went to look for their, um, um, their contact. I spoke, the day I spoke with Rebecca, I knew, okay, this is God at work because I already said I wasn't doing IT audit anymore. I was going to change career and just go look for something else to do. Then, guys, before we finished our classes, before the last day, I already got three offers. Not based on the class I had before, but based on what Rebecca and Nana taught me. I guarantee you that if you can put in your all, and trust me, you don't have to go over and beyond. If you can just, everything you need on the job is what these people are going to teach you everything no other no other um, documents or no other class or no other training is required everything they teach you in this class and you go back on your own to just study that is what you and that's what you need no extra thing and i can guarantee you by the grace of god as soon as you finish that if sometimes before you finish the class you already got a job so just like my case is similar to um, Fumilayo, the only difference is I'm also an IT compliance and controls analyst. I wouldn't have taken that role if I didn't take this class. I would want to stick fully to my internal auditor's role. But I took that role because of the confidence days I had. I had so much confidence um, when I took that role. But unlike Fumilayo, I came in the midst of 
my my company just went public so there was nothing in place i when i said nothing i mean nothing i didn't even have a manager the person i report to is the senior director of information security he has no idea of what i'm supposed to do so i'm supposed to figure everything out on my own SOX compliance pci dss everything i should figure everything out you know what i mean so if you don't know what you're doing normally i would have <laughs> If I didn't take this class, I would have resigned and just looked for an internal audit role. But I was able to, to do the things expected of me. I mean, these people don't even have any templates in place. I, I had to go above and beyond. I went online, get, uh, checked stuff, and built uh, all the templates they need. I'm able to do this because of this class. So once again, I'm going to say thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Nana. And guys, you are in the right, in the best place, not just the right place. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tola. Anybody else want to um, just say a word of encouragement to them? All right. I think that's, I think that was all. Okay, I I posted the registration link in the chat, uh, but I also want to, guys, and from what they've said, the reality is that on a if you get lucky, you'll find a job where the training is available. You know, they're they're patient with you to figure things out, but that may not always be the case, right? So what I encourage people is that. In, don't focus on don't focus on the money if you know what you're doing the money will come you get what i'm saying focus on building the skill set that will actually get you there i know most people think that it is the fast way to get rich nowadays right um which it can be true but you are only worth what you know so when you come to the class my hope is that you will focus on learning the stuff the concept but actually focus more on actually doing it so you can speak to how to do it when we interview a lot of people at my job we realize that most people it's easy for you to learn IT audit if you go on Google and you type what is IT audit IT audit process IT audit steps the notes are right there for you to read and be able to speak but when a project is presented in front of you that's where reality will hate, right? So we hope that our class is able to bridge that gap of giving you the hands-on experience for you to be confident to not just get a job, but succeed in that job and thrive in that job too as well. Um, we, in, in addition to our class, um, we realize that there's a need for, we come across students who or or folks who they've taken a training so they don't want to spend more money to take another training but they're just looking for someone to kind of help them with help them kind of get acclimated to what they're they're being assigned at work meaning they didn't have the hands-on experience from the training that they took or something so for that reason we're expanding our consulting services to be able to provide that hand holding to some of our training this is something that we, we we did but it wasn't like our focal focus so for 2020 we're also um directing our focus to being able to provide that service to either our students or even if you're not a student of ours and you you're on the job and you need someone to kind of help you navigate the high waters um we're here to also be able to serve you with that um i'm gonna share um sorry give me a second let me pull up something that i want to share with you guys So we have like a, we have a consulting service that we offer. Um, it's something that we've always offered, but never really um, put <laughs> a lot of time to promote it. But we wanted to use this opportunity to pitch it to those of you on YouTube or those of you guys in the um, in the live session right now. If you happen to be on a project and you need some sort of help, whether it's helping with you helping you with 
um, day-to-day tasks that are being assigned, if it's risk assessment, if it's control testing, if it's work paper review, whatever it is that you have been assigned and you need help with, feel free to reach out to us and we will talk and figure out how to be um, how to be of um, assistance to you uh, because it breaks my heart when I see that someone has been looking for a job for a long time and they get the job and they can keep the job. You know, it's a heartbreaking um, thing and we just hope to be able to bridge that gap and help folks be successful because th- there aren't a lot of people like us <laughs> in these industries, right? So even at work, when I see someone who maybe they're from Africa or they look like me, you know, black and things like that, I get excited because for the longest time, I was the only black slash African person on a team, you know, and that became kind of like the norm. So I want to be able to also contribute to that change of not only placing placing people on the jobs, but helping them succeed in their career aspirations too as well. Um, any other question, guys? Um, I have one last thing that I want to do, but I want to open the floor for any additional questions. All right. Hi. Yes. I had a quick question. Sure. Um, so prior to this session, I was told by someone who took your um, who took your course previously that um, the course was around twelve hundred, and I was wondering, um, are you doing something different with this session than you have in the past? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So our our the cost of our sessions has changed over time. I think. They probably give you the the person who probably give you the cost was the someone who took it back you know when init- initially started so we we expanded our syllabus and we spend more um, weeks with our students now than when we started because we realized that the I think it was six weeks that we were spending with them when init- initially started it wasn't enough to be for them to grasp the information so we extended our course to nine weeks sometimes we eat into 10 weeks so just we did a cost adjustment to you know to be able to also make up for the time that we're spending with our students we also spend time with our students outside of the course right um meaning if they want me to spend one-on-one time with them to go over this stuff you know so to make up for that we've had to kind of do a cost adjustment um, we were, we're actually, today's actually the last day we're at, we're actually offering a 400 discount for anybody who registers before or by the eighth. Um, so if you do register today, that 400 gets applied to your last payment of the class, just, you know, because I know it's, it's it's a change that some people have to get used to. So we wanted to also accommodate for that. Um, I'm sorry. Does the form that apply to all of us here because, or oh, just people that applied today? I mean, registered today. If you are registered by today, meaning if anybody registers tomorrow, the 400 will not apply. So okay, if you register by today, not necessarily today. Yeah, I mean it's the same thing, but <laughs> it's, an English word for you. <laughs> it's the same thing, but yeah. So, so in other words, if twelve twelve a.m. hits, then <laughs> no, because I'm already registered. You understand? So I want to make sure the phone applies to yeah. me and the people that register prior to today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if, by end of today, oh, you should be fine. It so yeah. So pretty much, if your name is in the classroom, then you, you're you fine. <laughs> good. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, my name is Ty. I just wanted to share my experience yes, regarding please. the IT audit class. Yes, please. I just completed one like two months ago. Like, and I've done some interviews like Deloitte's KPMG, in which I was able to get to the last stage of the interview. But basically, what I think that is really affecting me is like because the person did not teach us anything about it. was just like you're reading, like on just reading PowerPoint. You understand? Mm-hmm. No practical, no project, no presentation, and all of that. So I think this is the right class for everyone. I will even encourage if I'm not registered, I'll advise everyone to register. 
Thank you. I appreciate Based that. Based on your syllabus so far, like I would have seen, I would advise everyone to raise that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Hey, Nana. It's TJ here. How are you? Hey, TJ. It's, uh, well, hi, Rebecca. How are you guys doing? We're doing very well. Thank you for joining. Uh, no worries. I was away from my um, computer. I'm not sure if others have went. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm a former student. I actually graduated two sessions ago, and I'm currently a senior. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine. Yeah, I'm currently a senior associate with KPMG. Um, I remember starting your class without any prior IT audit experience. And as I look back months now to see where my life is at, I'm extremely grateful. Um, I think you guys are doing the right thing by taking this first initial step by registering for this class. I heard the last um, lady that was spoke and I remember paying that price. I think, what was it like two, 2000, I think it was two grand, but I will be honest and say, once you graduate the amount that you're going to make, you will look back and say, you're glad you spent it. I've never made six figure in my entire life living in this country. Um, graduating your class actually made that possible for me. And um, I tell you a story a lot you may not know, and I'm getting a bit shaky right now just thinking about it because it's been a life changing experience. You guys take it seriously. Come together as a team. Once your class start, form a study group, create a WhatsApp, chat with one another so you guys can interact, whatever it takes. You focus. If you want to change your life, this is the best initial start. And I'm living proof of that. I don't know what much needs to be said. If this doesn't motivate you to do what you need to do to take care of yourself, your loved ones and your family back home, if you're from Africa, I don't know what will. The back door has been left wide open for a lot of us. And this is the time to seize that moment. No pride. None of us know anything. Just ask questions. Read the paper, read the document, read the documentation, go back and watch the videos, try to educate yourself because if I can do it, every single one of you can do it. I'm no special. I'm not a genius. All I did was study the information that was presented to me. And most of you may know KPMG is one of the big four. I wasn't just hired by KPMG, but I was also hired by Deloitte. I choose to go with KPMG, KPMG because they were better fit for me. Once again, if I can do it, every single one of you can do it. It just take that grit. You got to have that grit, that determination, and have your why. Yep. Your why is your most motivation. Yep. It's Thank nothing you. much to be said, but whatever I can do to help, I'm in the group once you graduate. We all can keep in contact with each other. I can. Maybe if I say how much I make now, that might help. Is that okay, Rebecca? If you're comfortable with that, I'm um, absolutely comfortable with it. Okay, yeah, that's when I was hired. You know, the only training I had was everything that I learned in the class. I negotiated my contract like Rebecca stated. They brought me as as a senior with KPMG, offering me a hundred, knowing that I've learned everything I could. My interview went well. I asked for more, and guess what? They never challenged it. It's not that much of a huge difference, but I think I asked for one ten. They offered me 110. I've started. My bonus will be coming up in March. And I'm also going to begin a 2% book because I was hired in the California office and I live in Texas. That's how bad they wanted me. They made a role for me because I was so persuasive in the interview. Everything that they are teaching me is what I comprehend, it's what I put out there in the world. Mm -hmm. And mind you, what I did prior, I didn't sniff six figure. So if she's charging you whatever she's charging, trust me when I tell you this, pay it. Retain the information, go out there and do what you got to do. That's it. Thank you, TJ. And I, I want to say something about TJ. <laughs> TJ was one of our students that always had a question and I appreciated him. Of, I, I appreciated this about him because oftentimes because the class sessions are so long, people tend to tune out. <laughs> People tend to tune out probably like past lunch, right? When they come back from lunch. But TJ was that one student was very attentive to everything, everything. And he always asked questions. And 
if you know anything about me is I I like questions. If I don't know something, I don't know everything, right? I don't know everything at all. I'm still learning myself. But if I don't know something, we're going to research it together. And the next class, we're going to talk about it. But your success will be dependent on you, okay? If you, I always say, tell people, even if this training was just $5, make that $5 worth it by being fully present. If for any reason you don't have the time commitment, then I encourage you to hold off until you have the time commitment. Just because I don't want you to waste money and not get your money's worth. It's not about the money at all. You know, it's not about the money at all. It's about you being able to invest in yourself and us being the contributors of that investment and for everyone who has registered i am very excited um for the class because you guys are are our first class for 2022 so i'm very excited um and i hope that you will get out of this training everything that you hope to get which is a new um career transition um with that said i want to is there anybody else is there any, yeah, well, this is Fabiola. I just wanted to say something. Yeah, go ahead, Fabiola. Uh, I wanted to say, when you're done with the course, don't be discouraged about how long it takes for you to get a job. Because even when I was done with the course, it took me about almost a year and some months. Because, one, I wasn't focused as much as I should have been when I finished the course. But at the same time, you really have to just sit down, go over the materials, start studying about um, for the interview, and just don't give up because there will be a company out there that desperately needs somebody and is willing to train you. And I feel like there are companies out there, a lot of companies, you really just have to sit down, dedicate time to apply for jobs. I was applying for jobs for um, 10, 10 jobs, 15 jobs a day. And it took me about three months and I finally got, you know, a position. And one thing that I realized and I appreciate is that we, um, well, Rebecca has a WhatsApp group that, um, students come in, give um, their opinions, they help other students out um, in areas that they're struggling in. And Rebecca is always a call away and a text away. So even if you feel like the course is expensive, it's worth it. Because once you start making that paycheck, it's not even about the paycheck, but once you learn the job and you actually like what you do, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna appreciate what you learned in the course. But what I would say is, when you're done with the course, don't slack on studying because it's going to take longer for you to actually get in the position that you need to be in. Yep. Thank you so much for being Anybody else? Yeah. Rebecca. Um, Rebecca. Yes. I heard you say just now, if you don't have the time, if time don't per- permit you, <clears throat> mm-hmm. we should really put it off. So I remember stating to you that I have an obligation at 12.45 to 2.20 for the next 15 weeks. Would, it, would that be okay for me to um, take the class and still look on all the materials and the, oh, yeah, definitely. the lectures definitely. And, and still do the reflection on, on, on Thursday? Definitely. To- that, that, okay, that, should, that should be totally fine because we record our session. I was saying that in terms of like being able to have time to study, having time to not okay. just the, not just the lecture time, but that's that's totally fine. You should be fine. Got it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, guys, we're going to transition. I haven't we work with another person um, who is who serves as a bridge coach. I see that um, Lisa is online, um, so I'll let her talk a little bit. But what? she has also worked with a lot of our students and what she does is that um for some of our students who are transitioning from a totally different industry into like it um as part of our class we do um resume building and stuff like that uh, but she spends more time with our students um after the training if you need hand if you need hand holding with interview preps and having someone to kind of guide you through that whole interview process she is the person that we work with um to help some of our students she's helped a lot of our students um the reason why we kind of outsource this to her is because our trainings are back to back and we have a lot of students that we work with at the same time so sometimes you may not you might not be able to get on my time at, 
immediately as you need she's the person that we work with and she's able to also do the exact same thing if not even better when it comes to interview preps and making sure that your resume is up to par with what the market is looking for um i want to give her a few minutes to just talk to you guys a little bit about her services and what she has to offer Lisa, can you hear? Hey, Rebecca, thank you. Um, thanks, Raina Consulting, for this opportunity. Uh, personal testimony. I just want to echo what everyone has said so far. Um, so I'm a bridge coach. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm um, Lisa Fabero. And uh, what I mean by bridge coach is um, I serve as like a, a mentor or coaching um, candidates that are transitioning from um, after taking the IT audit class to, um, you know, getting the job. I um, come in to help with um, interviewing. Um, I provide um, real life mock interview sessions, um, um, you know, just pretty much guiding um, the job candidate throughout the hiring process. And um, the personal testimonial that, um, you know, I wanted to get is um, I've worked with several people that is, um, you know, going through this process and um, the level of content that students from Rena Consulting um, have, you know, is, is very encouraging and it's easier for me to work with um, those job candidates. Um, what I mean by that is a lot of people have taken um, other classes and I was listening in on um, other, um, you know, testimonials and how they were comparing um, some of these IT audit um, courses. Um, not so certain or anything, but I do want to say that, you know, students that come out of this class very much, um, you know, are more, um, um, you know, understanding of, um, you know, the IT terms um, and um, have a better understanding and better information compared to everyone else. So definitely um, just want to encourage everyone listening right now that you're starting from a good place and actually one of the best places um, see this as an investment into your career. You know, the money you'll be earning at the end is nothing compared to, you know, what you're paying right now. So definitely um, see this as, as an investment. Now, back to my services. Um, again, as um, Rebecca stated, I work with, um, I work with um, Lysen Consult and pretty much what we do is assist the candidates, um, you know, right from taking the audit class, um, we help with resumes, um, help with, um, you know, coaching, both um, on the job skills, soft skills, um, you acquire technical skill, um, skills, obviously, from this bootcamp, which I mean, Lisa, I think your audio is no, I can't and, uh, work on strengthening, um, you know, your interviewing abilities. Um, you know, a lot of people come um, asking questions about the resume, you know, what did you put on there? And also, I think I caught a few people asking, should we go for senior positions or, you know, or many junior positions? So we talk through those. And again, everyone has different stories or backgrounds, right? So it's just a matter of um, listening to your story and guiding you through the process. And, you know, um, we've had, you know, very um, good success stories from everyone we've worked with so far. Um, I'm not, I'm not guaranteeing uh, a job. We're not guaranteeing a job, but at least the basic understanding to get through to the hiring process, building, um, you know, social media presence, knowing what recruiters are looking for, you know, you're going to get a lot of information from this class, but then, you know, the, you know, the extra step or the extra advice or the one-on-one -on -one sessions that you need to make sure that, you know, you're going through the right process. Um, is it like background check after you get the offer? You know what are some of the um, what are some of the um, in, um, things that you know questions that are asked that you know there are a lot of people that get stuck. You know, it. So um, I'll I'll, I'll pass it on to um, Rebecca, but I don't know if anyone has questions for me, um, but. Definitely, um, I'll, Rebecca, I'll share my contact information. Um, go through the class, uh, make sure, like um, someone else um, stated, you have to do your own studying. 
um, you know, we do have IT audit um, background knowledge that will be able to tailor to some of these um, recruiter type questions, but then you also have to do your part in studying. So um, uh, yeah, I'll pass it on to Rebecca, but thank you so much um, for listening in and um, hopefully we get to work together after your class. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so guys, I have her information on up in the screen. And even if you don't take our class, it's good to keep her information uh, because she doesn't just help with just IT audit resume, even other um, IT industries, she can still serve as a coach for those to as well. Interview preps, um, negotiation, background check, especially for clearance processes. She is um, someone that you should always have in your resource pocket. Um, with that said, I think that's pretty much everything that we had for today. So thank you guys for making out the time to attend our training session. If you happen to have any additional question, please feel free to email us. Our email is up in the screen, right? Rainaclassroom at gmail.com. Um, or you can also, you can also contact us. Let me see if I can post our I'll, I'll post our um, number in the chat here, um, but feel free to reach out if you have any additional question. Again, st class starts on sa on Saturday. Um, so yeah, um, any other last minute question, contribution before we wrap up? Um, thank you very much. Um, I see most of the job is asking um, clearance, clearance, clearance. How do you guys come in here? Oh, we should reach out to the lady who just spoke. Yeah, so when it comes to clearance, if a job is asking you to have had clearance, we went well, so let me just let me just clear it out. We don't we can't offer you clearance, okay? Clearance is offered by the government, but there are jobs out there that are looking for people who are cleared, meaning you already have some level of clearance, whether it's public trust, secret, top secret, or top secret with poly, whatever they are. Um, if they're looking for for someone who has already had it and you don't have it, then you probably won't qualify for that job role. But however, if there are job opportunities out there that are looking for someone who is clearable, meaning even if you don't have a clearance yet, as long as you are a US citizen and are able to get a clearance, you can apply to those. At that point, when you do apply to such jobs, um, there are a lot of forms that you have to fill out, right? Um, for them to process your background check because it's not just like a regular background check. It's a, it's a, it's additional layer of um, background check that they run. Um, that's what Lisa was saying that she, she also does help with, um, with those, um, with those activities too, as well, because how you populate those forms <laughs> will, is very important because they, they're very detailed with, um, with the, with the background check that the government does on you. Thank you very much. And if you don't mind putting the number. Um, like yes. Um, let me actually do it right now. <clears throat> um. Yeah, so all things being equal, um, the classes start next week, right? Yes, then... the class starts next week, 9 a.m. Eastern time prompt. So please um, make sure you're on time and follow the steps that I just showed you guys to get the link, okay? Because for some reason, sometimes people forget and they they go to the emails looking for the link, but the link will be in the classroom, okay? So just go to the classroom, navigate under WebEx, um, class, um, WebEx folder, and then click on the Saturday link. So Already. most of us, our case is different. So I think we have to talk to you guys one on one because uh, we are we are engineers in other field, but we want to add this to our resume. And sure, no problem. Knowledge. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you so much for your time. You get a few minutes back of your time. We're supposed to end at also we're ending a little early. So thank you so much, and we will. Um, talk to most of you on Saturday, okay? And enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye bye. You do the same.
Peace. Peace.